Good morning, everybody. I'm ready to start in on building these two garden shed doors, but a couple of things came up. First of all, uh, thank you for your comments about the direction of this diagonal brace. It probably should go the other way depending on where the hinges are, but as I got to looking at this design, I think I can simplify this a lot by eliminating those diagonal braces altogether because I'm gonna have that siding piece inside that's gonna be sandwiched between the front and the back. And that is what's gonna provide all of the stability and the rigidity of the door. So really, I don't think those diagonal braces would really do anything. Second, one of my goals with this was to make lighter doors than the ones that are on there right now that are built with those two by six boards all the way around. But if I do this method by sandwiching together the two frames, you know, sandwiching this in the middle, that siding, that's actually gonna be a thicker door than the ones I have out there right now, which I don't really want because that would extend out a little bit further. So that got me thinking, do I even really need this back frame on the door? Maybe all I need is just that siding piece and then just this front trim on the door, really just to kind of make it look nice. And if it doesn't want to hang straight or it wants to bend or warp, I could always make another frame to put behind it, right? I think that'll be a much simpler version. I'm still gonna keep that cross brace in the center just to help keep the two sides together while I'm building those frames. It feels like it shouldn't be this simple. It feels like I should be making this more complicated. It seems almost too easy. Oh, wait a second, here's the other problem. These hinges are made for inch and a half material, this kind of door here. So if I do it smaller, I'm not sure how well those hinges are gonna work. And if I do the full sandwich, then it's actually gonna be almost two inches thick. I mean, that would work for these, but then when it closes, see it's gotta fit into there. Then this outside part would stick out further. Hmm. Okay, I think I have a new plan here. So here's what I can do is just cut some inch and a half wide strips that will go on this side of the door and then over here on this side of the door. So they'll extend out from the back a little bit, like a quarter of an inch here, but that's fine because that gives it plenty of room for those hinges. Plus it, you know, kind of just makes that look a little bit more finished. And while I'm at it, I might as well add trim to the top and bottom too, just to finish it all up. So there's my current plan. I've sorted through all that lumber and I've picked out the four pieces that seem to be about the straightest. I'm going to use those for the two vertical pieces, the styles on each of the doors. Now what I want to do is just pick out the best section within each board. I just don't want these to be warped or cupped or anything. This one looks pretty good. It doesn't have any damage spots on it, but I do notice that on this end here, it starts to curve inward a little bit. So I'll just make sure that I mark them and be cutting from this side. Now I can cut out the three horizontal pieces for each of the door. For these, I can set up a stop block on my miter saw so that they're all the same length. Now I need to cut out that curve on these two header pieces. So I'm just gonna kind of mark where that goes. So I want the curve to come from here over. I mean, I guess I can kind of do this freehand. I could, you know, use a string and a nail and probably get it more accurate, but this will be more fun. <laughs> Watch this. I'm gonna put my elbow right here on this center spot. Give that a shot. Cut this out with my jigsaw. Boy, this sure would be easy if I had a bandsaw though. <laughs> T 
see if I can get this a little evener on my spindle sander. Just look at that. Work of art right there. So now all I need to do is transfer this over to the next board. There's the first door frame. Hello? Okay, good, these look pretty good. So tomorrow, what I need to do is, I think what I'll do is just set these on top of that siding and then just trace them out, cut them by hand, maybe a little bit bigger, and then I can take my router and just go all the way around it, even it up and then put that trim on, it'll be done. Just like that. It's never just like that, is it? I always think it's gonna be just like that. I thought today would be just like that. Turned out not to be. <laughs> you wanna talk about car batteries? Well, if there's one thing I learned from the comments in yesterday's video, it's that my man card should be revoked for not changing the battery in my wife's car myself. Oh, there's a lot to unpack here, so let's break it down. First, like I mentioned, this is my wife's car, not mine. Yet, yeah, not a single person suggested that my wife should change the battery. But, like me, my wife has a full-time job. Second, if you haven't changed a car battery made in the past, oh, 20 or 30 years, they can be really difficult to get to and not something that everybody has the tools for. That battery for my wife's Kia, it required a long wrench to get down underneath it. That, I don't have anything like that, so I would have had to kind of fashion something. Look, for me to replace that car battery, I would have to figure out how to remove it. I'd have to fuss around with various tools that I never use. I'd have to take it in my truck up to Cragen, the auto parts store. I'd have to get the new battery, bring it home, reinstall it. Look, I don't do this regularly. And judging by my past experience, this would have easily taken me a couple of hours, if not more, and it would have been a very frustrating experience. But most importantly, I run a business. I've run a business for over 20 years. Making these videos is my full-time job. And the more my business grows, the more I realize that the old adage that time is money, it's true. Changing a battery is a perfect example of a midday distraction that is just better solved by professionals. And I know a lot of you were just thinking that I'm gonna save a lot of money by doing it myself, but let's look at the numbers. The auto parts store wanted $200 for that battery. The Kia dealership wanted $130 for that exact same battery, but I imagine that their installation fees would have brought the cost probably up to $200 also. AAA came out in in less than an hour after she called them and they replaced the battery with a brand new one for only $158 and it took him less than 30 minutes. We pay $125 a year for a membership that covers all three cars. It's just well worth it. Bottom line, it would have cost me a lot more money and time to change that battery myself. Over the years, I've really learned to play to my strengths. If I need a faucet replaced, I'll hire a professional plumber because in my experience, it's gonna take me several really frustrating hours and it'll probably still end up dripping. Those are hours that I could be earning money working on my job. And here's another one. I used to think that it was like super important that everybody should know how to change a tire. Why? AAA will come out and have me back on the road way faster than if I tried to change it myself. Again, changing a tire isn't something that I do regularly. Plus, I won't end up all filthy dirty after it's done. Honestly, I don't even have a clue where the spare tire is on my truck or how to change it. It simply doesn't concern me and it doesn't really need to. Basically, all the frugalness that I bring to woodworking in this channel extends 
to everything else in my life. Maybe I'm just a cheapskate. <laughs>